he thrust out the enemy from before. Have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor dismayed. The Lord our God is with you wherever you go. And he said, Make a thing from my mother's womb, and make it I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who may ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and the the Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold my righteous right hand. And Jesus is sacrificed. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. But has now been revealed by the appearance of the Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death for life and immortality to light through the gospel. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name. Yea, do I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though all mountains shake with swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, 
the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and he cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. The Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all the world. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever you formed the earth and world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Lord God. The days of our years are seventy, and if, re and if by reason of strength they are eighty years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For soon it is cut off. Away. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to the Lord's word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandment. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your passion. I will lift up my eyes to the hills, but must come my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made the heavens and earth. He will not allow your foot to do the He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your king. The Lord is your shape and your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forever.
of the congregation remain standing while we have an open selection by the St. Mark to come by and fight. Of him, Heavenly Father, of the smile, of just as 
generosity, of all the things that he's done, Heavenly Father, just stay with us, Heavenly Father. And through all things, Heavenly Father, we just give you glory, Father, that we just know through all things that you are in control, and it's all about your divine will. We just pray that the Holy Spirit moves through this situation, Heavenly Father, that uh, this life will not be in vain, Heavenly Father, that uh, his love will deserve, Heavenly Father, that and his going home, Heavenly Father, that a soul will be touched, Heavenly Father, that they, they may become close to you. For those who may not know you as well, Heavenly Father, that through this passing, Heavenly Father, that they will seek you out, Heavenly Father, and have a closer walk with you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Heavenly Father. Just thank you for the life, the gift of his life. We just know that we cannot keep him forever, Heavenly Father, but just thank you for the four school and two years that he was on this earth. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and honor you in the precious name of Jesus of Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'm beginning from Psalm 103, verses 6 through 17, according to the New Living Translation. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unjustly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing <coughs> He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for our sin. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wildflowers. We bloom and we die. The wind blows and we are gone, as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to his children's children. May the word of God continue to bring comfort and peace to each of you. I was doing the Old Testament reading of the Pentecost of the King James Version. Revelation 21st chapter, verses 1 through 7. And it reads this thus And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw, and I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem, coming down from out from God out of heaven, as pale as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there should be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that and he sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of, of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all the things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. This is the word of God for the people of God. And I was very sorry to interrupt you, Brother Tom. And the people that said the celebration of life. Yes. 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 The people cannot have celebration of some degree of, of joy or good stuff. We can celebrate through our tears. They can run, but that does not hinder us from celebrating. Yes. Celebrating Tuesday. Or if it's a celebration of life of John in the prophet. <coughs> And a celebration of what God has done. Mm -hmm. That 
brings the joy. And mingling the mix with the tears and the song. Oh, we sit before God on this day. We celebrate what God has done through his life and how his life has touched joy. Joy. On this day. Amen? Amen. We now have a soul by Deacon Douglas Brooks, followed by the acknowledgments and a rich brother by Sister King.
Good morning. Good morning. To the family of John Henry Robinson, we say to you that you are in our prayers during this time. <coughs> to his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and the entire family, we want you to know that we're continuing to keep you in prayer. The family has selected a couple of cards to be read during this time. They have received numerous cards from family, friends, that they're going to take back home and read during their family time. So we will not read all of the many cards that we'll receive. With caring sympathy in the loss of your husband, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Matthew 5.4 With God, love lives forever. May the compassion of those who care surround you. The memories of shared joys encourage you, and the warmth of God's love embrace you. My sister Barbara, love you dearly, Amelia. Sometimes there are just no words. Thinking of you with sympathy and the hope that the time will bring comfort to your heart. And Nat and Lindell Shelton. Those we love are never forgotten. Praying you'll have the peace of God, the hope of his promises, and comfort in the gift of your memories now and always. Thinking of you at this time, Mr. and Mrs. Kevin Easley and family. We did receive several church letters that I will read. The Old Landmark Gospel Association to the family of Mr. John H. Robinson. It is with deepest sympathy that we, your friends and co-laborers in Christ, send you these words to express our sincere sympathy to you in the passing of your loved one. We are hoping and praying that they will give you comfort at this time. The passing of your loved one is the will of God, and yet there is a human tie that has been broken with the, that bleeds the heart in agony and pain. May you find comfort and consolation in the words of Jesus. Cast your burdens on him, for he cares for you, 1 Peter 5, 7. To Vanessa, Cavell, and the entire family, the officers and members of the Old Landmark Gospel Association, and all your poor laborers in Christ are praying for you. May God bless you and give you strength and courage. Prayerfully submitted, Dr. Johnny J. Branch. The First Union Baptist Church, Crozier, Virginia. To the family of the late John H. Robinson, the First Union Baptist Church family extends a heartfelt condolences to over the over the homegoing of John Henry Robinson. To Mrs. Robinson, John, Vanessa, Delisha, and grown children and other family members, there is a lot about death that is a mystery to those left behind. One thing I know for sure is that as you mourn over the loss of your brother Robinson, you are not alone. Jesus is with you. Be open to his tender care. It is true that the loss of someone for such, so special can leave a void in your heart, but death cannot embrace the precious memories of Brother Robinson. Family, hold close to and cherish the, those memories, and remember that as long as you have those cherished memories of him, he will always be with you. Family members, we pray that God will strengthen you in your hour of need, and if there's anything we at First Union can do to lighten your load, please do not hesitate to let us know. With sympathy and Christian love, Reverend Frank Lawrence, the third pastor. The Shady Grove Baptist Church, Young Springs, Virginia. To Mrs. Barbara Jean Robinson and family, we are sorry to hear in the passing of your beloved Mr. John Henry Robinson. Today is both a sad day and a happy day. Sad because of the loss that has occurred, but happy because he has reached his final destination in life and is now united with our Lord and Savior. A person that departs from this earth will never truly leave, for they are still alive in our hearts and minds through us. They live on. However, take comfort in knowing that your husband, father, and grandfather are now resting in the arms of our Lord and Savior, Pastor Cleveland. The ministerial staff and congregation of the Shady Grove Baptist Church extends our heartfelt sympathy to you and your family during this time. Please know that we are here for you and your family if you need us. The Richmond Christian Center to the John Henry Robinson family. Heaven is a real place, Jesus, Jesus said so, and it is possible for him to, it is not possible, impossible for him to lie. 
For the believer, death means life, justice, in another place. Remember, it's appointed unto us once to die, but then we meet the Lord in the air and forever be with him. May these words bring comfort and strength in the loss of our brother. Know you will see him again. Dr. Steve Parson and the entire Richmond Christian Center family. The St. Mark Baptist Church to the family of Brother John Henry Robinson. On behalf of the St. Mark Baptist Church, we would like to extend our deepest sympathy to the family of Brother John Henry Robinson. In this time of great sorrow, please know that your family is in our thoughts and our prayers. Brother Robinson was a beloved member of the St. Mark Baptist Church family, and as his church family, we share in your sorrow during this most difficult time. We encourage the Robinson family to keep the faith and trust in God during this time of bereavement. If there is anything we can do for you during this time, please do not hesitate to contact the St. Mark Church family. Prayerfully submitted, Reverend Dr. Tracy Daniels, Pastor Elect, and Sister Kim Burke, Clerk. The family extends their gratitude to everyone for their condolences and prayers. He comforts us all, uplifts our spirit, and carries us through this time of sadness into a place of peace. At this time, if you could read the obituary silently. <laughs> And 
I know that there's hurt. I mean, my, I miss my mom and daddy to this day. There's sorrow. But for the believer, we don't have sorrow like those who have that right life. Right. <laughs> because see, we're all going to die one day. And you're going to see them again. Yeah. Okay? So I trust that that encourages you, give you hope, because uh, it ain't over. Thank you, Dr. Parsons. And I'm going to have a, a solo for a minister of the National Church. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. you but I do love the Lord yeah. and even though it's a sad moment it's a happy one knowing Christ yeah. and as the pastor stated to be absent from this body for those of us in Christ and Miss Barbara Chu we know that he was in Christ he's present with the Lord so Dwayne and Delicia and all of the family you all let that be comfort to you to know that without a shadow of a doubt, all is well. All is well. Yeah. 
The rare moments when you weren't sitting in the chair, you were probably peeping over the front door to check the shop, going to get the mail, and making sure that the empire was locked and secure. All right. <laughs> I find myself naturally over, moving over to get a chance to sit in that seat. Sitting in that chair added more to your character, and I always took the opportunity to sit in your seat in reflection of me looking up to you. I think sitting in your seat has allowed some of your hard work ethic to rub off of me. Sitting in your seat definitely taught me how to always stay on top of my money. <laughs> and most of all, sitting in your seat taught me the importance of taking the time to sit down with your family. Talking about the good old days from our past and being optimistic about our future. <coughs> it was never about what you said to me, but more about your actions. Grandpa was always consistent in life, and you pretty much knew what you were going to get with John Henry. Some people in the family say Grandpa and I had a different, almost special kind of bond, but I think what people saw was a simply honest reflection I used to have a running, a running joke with Grandpa if he had planned going out to go partying for the weekend. And he would always laugh in his response and go, ah, pass. <laughs> I can smile now knowing that you finally made it to your everlasting party in heaven. You will forever hold a special place in my heart, and I'm grateful to have you as my one and only Grandpa. Love always. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 through 
8, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 to 8. If you stand, you certainly appreciate it, you're able to stand. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. For well, a few minutes today, in our time, we want to talk about times and seasons. Time and seasons. Times and seasons. Most scholars agree that King Solomon was a writer of the Ecclesiastes. The writer talks about the meaning of life and the best way to live it. He declared in the opening verse of that chapter that everything under heaven and earth has a time and a season. Time is when something starts. Time is when it starts. Seasons is how long it lasts. Time is when it starts. And Season says how long it lasts. These parameters were created by God so that he could accomplish his will and purpose through events and people. God, with his wisdom and grace and mercy and compassion, put these dimensions in place for everything. This service today has a time. Supposed to start at what? 11 o'clock. That was the time. It also has a season, an unwritten season. I'd say maybe from 60 to, to 90 minutes, that's the season. Because if it isn't done by the time you all start looking all at each other, then it's done. Talk about three things very quickly life, times, and seasons. John Henry's times and seasons. Life's final times and seasons. For the sake of time, I combined some of those that were similar in the text. A time to be born and a time to die. We don't know, always know the moment of inception. But we know nine months later, we sure will. The mothers in the congregation are grateful to God that that gestation period only lasts nine months. <laughs> for an elephant, for example, it's 18 months. The season of life in America is 75.5 years and increasing. For black males, it's 72.3. 70 Black females live an average of 62.2 years longer than the brothers. The brothers, the sisters are going to outlive most of us, and I'm sure there's enough widows 
in the congregation can say amen to that. Some of us ought to praise God that we, that, that, that we live beyond that 72.3. Based on the average, I probably should have died 18 months ago. Based on those numbers. I will celebrate my 74th birthday on tomorrow. It's not because I've been good, but that God has been good. I didn't know Brother Robinson, so I had to ask around that. But one of the things that somebody told me, said, he doesn't look his age. He looks good for his age. And if you looked at him, you'd see right back that he looked what? Good for his age. Psalm 90 said, the days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength they are four score, yet in their strength and labor, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Time to be born and a time to die. Then he says, it's a time to kill and a time to heal. Anyone familiar with the Old Testament knows there's a whole lot of killing in the Old Testament. And a lot of that is ordered by God. But most of the killing was to protect the will and the purpose of God and his people. I'm not sure in today's world that the folks who are killing have a clear understanding of that. The fact is that 5.2 million cases of PSTD are happening in any given not only are they suffering, but their families are suffering. I think it's hard to kill folk and not have some negative impact from their action. Then he said there's a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Look at that. Weeping and laughing and mourning and dancing. The Robinson family, you're in a season of weeping and mourning. The average person weeps about six to twelve months after the year. But thanks be to God, the season isn't forever. In the midst of your tears and sorrow, even today, there's going to be some laughter. When you recall some of the hum humorous memories of Brother Robinson, there will be some laughter. Laughter releases some of the attention that we have. As African Americans, we are celebrated people. No pun intended. We enjoy a good meal and a good time. Brother Robinson won't be mad with you. That was part of his tradition as well. There might even be some dancing later on. This is in the text. I, I give it to you. He said there's a time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Right. It's hard to accept, but everybody was not expected to be in your life forever. Some folks can't move to their next level until they get some folk out of their life. Amen. Sometimes you gotta give up some folks so that you can move up. You are not, there's a friend that you were not meant to have forever. They were in your life for a week. They spent that season. They move on. And you move on. Some of you, amen, were not meant to stay married to the same person forever, even though you might have said to death, you was part. You have to let go jobs too. Some of you are holding on to jobs and not going nowhere. You're not going nowhere and nothing will happen. The Bible says sometimes you got to give up stuff so that you can move the stuff. I, I know a young lady, a by a young lady who was a silver engineer making $160,000 a year. She's now a school teacher making $42,000 a year. And she says, I'm the happiest that I have been in 20 years. Whatever feeds your soul. 
a time to love and a time to hate. Listen very careful. This is not coming from Reverend Martin. These are words spoken by King Solomon himself. I don't want what's I don't want what started here to last them. All I know is there's a time and a season for hate to end. Hate's not to do. Hate does more to hurt us than to hurt the folks that you're hating on. Some folks are hating on folks are dead on. <laughs> so there's a time of love and there is a time to hate. Why don't you make a personal decision today as we have a service with Brother Robinson to, to, to stop hating when you're supposed to be hating and have a reason you hate them. Let that end today. But make this a time to start loving. Start loving. You will find that it will change your life. Families love each other. That's how you remember Brother Robinson. I recently listened to also promised me dad by Joe Biden. He wrote a book about his son Bo and he died and he was 42 years old and he was really, really broken up over the issue because he remember earlier in his life he lost his, his wife and his children in an accident. But he said it was the love of families and friends that brought him out of that deep depression. A time and a season. All the seasons are designed to bring us closer to God and closer to each other. They are progressive in nature as you see them. Some seasons prepare us for other seasons. What you're going through now may be difficult, but it will prepare you for another season in your life. It is the will and purpose of God that we be filled with his love that will leave no room for hate. Yeah. The times and seasons of John Henry Robinson. I enjoyed it. I hope my grandchildren, I'm going to go to my mind, come up. And I, when I have my day and talk about their pop. Children are so special. Too. So sometimes, that other generation is kind <laughs> this is all we got left to work with is, is, is our grandchildren. And they just love on us and that just blesses us. So. It started January the 20th, 1936 and ended September 25th, 2018. His season on this planet was 82 years, 9 months, and 5 days. That's a long season and it sees the life of the average black man. Family ought to be praising God for such a long season of life. I did not know John Henry personally. All I know is I know about his name that, that he was named after an African American folk hero. His parents had to be real ambitious to name him John Henry. John Henry, John Henry. He was a hard working man. He worked on the railroad. His job was to take a sledgehammer and break rocks open so they could build the railroad. But one of the things I heard from all the folks I asked about John was that he was a hard working man. During the course of his life, he had to deal with some issues. And I'm sure with that issue of being named John Henry, but I guess being a real, real deep, strong guy, it wasn't too much of a problem for him. John's season as a husband is over. Then Barbara celebrated 54 years. That's an amen and a hallelujah. Only 6% of all marriages last over 50 years ago. Barbara, you are some great company. Far too often. We focus on what we lost and sometimes don't look at what we had. Had a good name All right. for a long time. That's a shot right there. Yeah. You had a good man for a long time. And you will be all right. John 
one hand, you're seasonal. Fathering, grandfathering. Vanessa, John, Lisa, Ashley, Amber, Abby, Jordan, Aaron, Jeremiah. Your season of touching the grandfather and hurting him and praying with him is over. But the memories, memories are gifts from God that you'll always remember. Some of them as clear as you did today. 20 years ago, you will remember the moments that you had with them and it will bring a beautiful smile on your face. Remember all those little lessons that he taught you. And children and grandchildren, you're going to be all right. Car fixing and helping other seasons though. It's time for the folk that he helped for you to help somebody else. Yes, <laughs> he wasn't just helping you with your car. Come on. He was teaching you life lessons. Because you know life lessons last us all our life. So if he helped you, make sure you help somebody else. That keeps his memory alive. He was an entrepreneur. He was his own boss. We need more entrepreneurs in our communities. Be your own boss. Not only will you be your own boss, but he provided opportunities for other brothers and sisters through his gift. John came the season of suffering. So, I understand he suffered from Alzheimer's. A disease that leaves the mind, but takes the mind and man. And for man, great power and great strength. That's Challenging to not know who you are. Though we may not know who you are, in your heart and in his heart, there was <coughs> once again all the past they said he was a good man who worked hard and provided hard. Uh, now let's look at the sun. Season of life. Amen. 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 One of these 
these days, we're going to put it in eternal season. In eternal season, Lord. In eternal season, Lord. And in eternal season, our prayers. In eternal season, of sin. In eternal season, of worship. And in eternal season, of the divine. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found for the blind. But now I see twas grace that taught my heart to feel grace, my fear to me. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. Through 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 many days. And said, I have already come. It was a grace that brought us safety. And grace will lead us home.